Forget Netflix. Forget Hulu. Forget Apple TV. Meet the new center of your home entertainment system. This is the Sanyo VTR 1350. And within this gigantic box of electronics is video quality that will absolutely blow you away. Forget 4K, forget 3D. This is black and white EIAJ video from a reel to reel tape. Now, what sets this machine apart from all the other VTRs that you've seen on the DataBits channel is this one has a time lapse feature. That's right. So, if you had cameras out in that parking garage and you wanted to catch the bad guys back in the 1960s, early 70s, you needed something like this. You needed a machine that would record video of such incredible quality that those bad guys would not even have had a lick of a chance because you'd have them in high definition on one of these reels of one inch videotape. Maybe it's half inch. I think it's half inch videotape. Yes, that's right. This General Electric television recording tape contains all the footage of that bad guy while he was stealing all your stuff. So now let's dive into this amazing machine and see just how incredible it really is. Very much like 16 millimeter film, this machine had to be threaded in order to begin the recording or playback process. And there was no easy throwing in a cartridge and letting the thing just do its thing. You had to work for your video and audio playback. Right here, you'll see three different modes. We've got a 12 hour, 24 hour, and 48 hour recording mode. And obviously your video quality is going to be reduced the higher you go. But if you want to be able to fit 48 hours worth of video on one of these particular reels, you could do so in this in the form of still frames. So let's kind of take a look through all of the features of the unit and then we'll kind of see it in action. So right here we've got a tracking control. Next to that we've got the selector mode to select the input that you were going to run into it, whether it's camera, TV, or line. Then you got the gigantic head drum right there and then all of the threading it's going in there. We'll, we'll thread it here in a second. Up here we have a still frame mode so you can go through and observe frame by frame what the thief has been doing in your garage. Here you have a motor control as well as a power control. Down here we have the rewind, stop, fast forward, record, standard play, edit audio, and long play. Now as far as the jack panel goes, here's your inputs and outputs. On the left side you'll see a mic input as well as an auxiliary in and auxiliary audio out jack. Those are your 3.5 millimeter jacks, very much like you're used to with your iPhone or Android phone. You see there a video in and a video out, and those are done in the fashion of what's called a UHF connector. In the middle there, you've got your camera input, camera sync out, looks like. And then you've got a, uh, a connector here. I think that's called an EIAJ connector, if I remember correctly. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. And then you've got the crazy, uh, well, power connector here that I had to rig up because I didn't have the proper one. So there's what my rigged up one looks like. This actually was for a Dell power supply to a laptop. But you can see the strange configuration there, very much like a, a computer's uh, power input, except it doesn't have uh, blades, it has little spindles instead. So, and of course I had to break the middle spindle off the ground. I know, I know, I've done the worst thing ever. And please forgive the dust because this thing was actually found inside an ancient Egyptian tomb and had been stored there for thousands of years. Now the absolute joy of finding a machine like this and finding the tapes for it is finding these tapes that are very much like VCR tape, very much like your standard VHS tape. However, these t older tapes get what's called sticky tape syndrome. Now the professionals that I know, such as uh, my friend Tom, who works for a, uh, a broadcasting station, will take these and bake them. 
they'll actually put them in an oven and bake them for a certain amount of time to make the tape usable again. It kind of causes all the materials in this tape to adhere to one another again. So uh, I haven't had to bake any of my tapes, but uh, I will show you a few of the tapes that I've run across over the years. Here is a, uh, a Panasonic videotape. It's an NVP-71. It's labeled as a 60-minute tape. Oh, but looky there. It's got a Sony videotape inside. Oh, well. So there's that tape, blank tape. Okay, now again, this was used for probably industrial purposes, schools, businesses, that sort of thing. Here's one that says Video Network Associates. One half inch helical scan videotape. There's my answer right there, half inch. Video Network Associates in principal cities and nationwide. So there's that. It's kind of like an Amore case for VHS. It's even got some Velcro on it. How about that? This is a blank reel, smaller reel, I think, than those other ones we saw over there. Nope, it's the same size. Seven inch reel. And let's see, we got this uh, Panasonic videotape here, NVP71 made by Matsusha. And this one has some guys on camera here. It's clean, trust me, just some guys hanging around. Sample footage, I was actually able to play that in one of my previous videos that you saw here in the channel. Here's a Hitachi videotape for helical scan video recorders. It's an R716. And inside this one is a Panasonic videotape made in Japan, so you knew it was good. Now this one actually says Sony on it, Sony Videotape V32. And this one's got Panasonic video inside of it. And uh, it's got some dates. Looks like somebody wrote down the, uh, the time periods that the uh, surveillance video was taken. It says right here, tape broken 11-27-79. The tape broke in 79. And the last one I got here, Panasonic Videotape NVP-71, and inside is actually a Sanyo tape. So this is what your Sanyo logo and tape look like for this machine. There's a, uh, a schedule in here showing the, the date in and the date out that this footage was recorded. Now I've removed this particular tape from its box, and look, it's even got a white back on it, which is really funky. But uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can thread in this Sanyo videotape. Let me show you how this works. So this tape, this tape actually feels pretty thick. It's very interesting. Okay, so we're going to go around this little, this little guide right here. And, and then I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to put it in front of this particular spindle here. Then I'm going to go around the helical scan video drum. And then you'll see there's another spindle right in there. Hopefully you can see that. And then right here is the sync head as well as the audio record head right there. There's actually two heads there. I'm going to put it in front of that. And then in front of the front of the capstan, not behind it, your uh, pinch roller is behind this little black piece here. And very much like the Sony's, it has a little uh, switch right here that tells the machine that there's still tape there. So that way, once that becomes unblocked, um, then the machine actually stops, powers off. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it around here. Now there's no little slot or anything to put the tape into. Just put it in there like that. Yeah, this tape feels pretty sticky. I doubt this thing will actually turn it, but we'll find out. All right, and then on the inside of this reel here is like a, a little bit of a rubber backing, so it helps to grip the tape and pull it through. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the power button on, which you see here. And then this motor button is actually controlling all the motors, but specifically the video head drum, which is not spinning now, but once I hit this button, you'll hear the video head drum begin to spin. And let's see if we can fast forward this tape, first of all. Nope. So this is what sticky tape syndrome will do to you. The tape will just not move through there. Or you gotta help it through. All right. 
Let's see if we can actually hit play. Yeah, it's really struggling. Really struggling. All right, so we'll probably put the tape back on it that I had earlier. I know that that particular tape that was on there, that GE, did not have sticky tapes under them. So we can go ahead and put that back into place. And it probably isn't going to rewind either, so I'll help it along there. But you can at least see this, the spindles moving. And notice that it does shut off. Again, because of that little spindle, little uh, it looks almost like a paper clip that sticks out. You can see it right there. And if I hit play, it goes forward, which immediately shuts it off because the tape normally is there to block it. Sony used a similar system. Okay, The pads that are on the back of this uh, little guide right here that press against the tape, those are pretty well rotten and ready to fall off. All right, so I've got my Apico real tape, televideo tape on there right now. The one that says guys on camera on it. Got it all threaded up. So I just wanted to show you what this actually looks like when it's supposed to work correctly. Uh, when it works correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button here. And you'll see the speed at which the tape is supposed to be moving. Now as far as I know that moves at 7.5 inches per second very much like regular audio reel-to-reel -reel tape. Now this long play button is, uh, it's got a problem. If I hit this button, we hear some really not nice noise. So if I switch it over to long play, yeah, that's what happens there. So what if I hit standard play and long play together, like that. So you can see the tape is just barely moving there. I guess it's doing what it's supposed to be doing at that point. What if we switch it to 48 hour mode? Ooh, look how slow it's going now. So there's 48 hour mode. There's 24 hour mode. And there's 12 hour mode. Can't see a whole lot of difference. Yeah, I guess you can. Now I don't have an owner's manual for this machine, but I'm guessing that if I did, they would tell us that we shouldn't remove this and we shouldn't remove this cover on this particular head drum, but uh, that's why we're actually going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws off and that one came off. There we go. Seems like they're maybe a little bit stripped. Stripped out, dudes. Yeah, that one's not turning. Let's get... Oh, there it goes. I had to think about it. Pull that off. So now you can see inside of this amazing piece of machinery. So we've got uh, two video heads running right across the side of each other. There. And then there's these little brushes that are brushing up off of the video head there, providing us a video signal. Which then makes you wonder what would happen if we turn the power on while this cover has been removed. And that's exactly what happens, what you are seeing there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the inside of this beast known as the VTR. So we're looking at a circuit board on the outside edge. There's two circuit boards there. There's two more circuit boards over here on this side. And of course, 
the bottom of this machine has been removed so you can see the beast in all of its splendor. We got a gigantic motor right here, which is uh, supplying the spin for the video head. The video head is attached to this spindle here and it uses the same belt configuration that I've seen in the Panasonic and Sony models, at least the Sony's, where this belt is flipped. So when I turn this motor here, you can see it's turning that spindle right there and the belt is flipped over. It's very strange. This is kind of cool. It looks almost like a computer cable that's connected here and it winds down and actually connects to a connector right there on the inside of that board right there. And speaking of the inside of that board, there is the sea of capacitors and resistors and wires going all over the place. There is a gigantic capacitor right there. I think that's called an electrolytic capacitor. And let's see, that I think that's the switch that switches it between record and playback there. Might have to clean that little booger to get any kind of video out of this thing. And let's see, we've got a connector connected there. And uh, actually, it's just a bunch of wires soldered on. And yeah, more wires soldered on. Uh, almost looks like this was built in uh, somebody's garage. So uh, yeah, another little circuit board right there. And here's the underworkings, the mechanics of the play, stop, fast forward, and rewind buttons. Those little keys are actuating a bunch of little spindles and levers and so forth here. Another uh, circuit board right there. And that little capacitor there actually says Sanyo on it, strangely enough. So there's where the jack panel is. And right there is where the power connector was probably should replace that with a modern one and it says here replace with the same type of fuse otherwise you'll catch the entire universe on fire and there's another little uh, transformer there and another little board there with a fuse must be some kind of power regulator type board there so yeah this is the inside of the unit it's very exciting isn't it and very confusing as well so while I was inside the unit cleaning some switches using a little contact cleaner, I was cleaning up this particular uh, potentiometer right here, this particular switch right here, and then of course our uh, 24, 48, and 70 million hour switch that's over there, cleaning that one out. And I found this uh, mystery message. I don't know what this means. There's a message that says pot bad audio, and there's an arrow pointing over here somewhere so pot bad audio so somewhere there is a pot bad audio going on in here uh, I can see a potentiometer right there so I'm not sure what's going on there and then I was trying to tighten or at least check the connectivity of this connector to this audio board and that wire right there just like fell off so obviously bad solder connection there but uh, as far as cleaning goes, I went ahead and cleaned up a couple of those uh, switches that we saw uh, just a second ago. So I cleaned this switch here, and then I found another one of those switches right there. And then I found another one of those switches right here. So I sprayed some of the contact cleaner right down in there. So, uh, and of course, the, uh, the contact cleaner that I'm using is... Uh, made by Radio Shack. It's Radio Shack uh, Control Contact Cleaner and Lubricant. Excellent stuff. I recommend it uh, if you can find a Radio Shack open somewhere. This thing very well could have bad audio in it. And uh, this is also interesting. Kirk Hall motor. Whoever Kirk Hall was, apparently he made that motor right there. And then down here, this is kind of interesting. This looks almost like computer chips on this board here, although they all say Sanyo on them. So there's some kind of integrated circuit here on this particular board and a bunch of ceramic capacitors going on there as well. So uh, give you another shot of this board right here since we've got it at this angle, kind of fun. It's got some potentiometers on it as well and some transistors with a heat sink. And now the moment of truth. 
will this reel-to-reel -reel video recorder actually play? And you're saying, wait a minute, you, you don't know if this machine can actually play? You didn't test it before you made this video? Well, actually, I did test it, and uh, I'm going to show you what my results were. So I've got a little bitty uh, television hooked up here, a little tiny flat screen LCD monitor. I've got the uh, audio and video wires connected. Let's go ahead and power it up. And if we look over at our monitor, this is what we get, regardless of whether or not the machine is actually playing. Here's what happens if I turn the motor off. So no motor. Motor now actuated. Now let's go ahead and hit our play button. Standard play here. Our reel starts turning. There we go. Everything's wired. Everything's looped. Everything is threaded. Now let's see what kind of video signal we have. And our video signal is exactly the same. If I switch it over to camera, it changes the pattern a little bit that we're seeing on the screen. We get to see that. Here's TV. Here's line. So it looks to me like we're actually not getting a signal from the tape at all. Um, if I hit stop, and then I switch the camera mode. Yeah, there's camera, TV, line. It's pretty well the same thing. Kind of odd. Uh, if I hit the record button, it goes blue on us there. Line, TV, camera. Looks like it changes a little bit. So, very, very odd. Go ahead and turn the record off. Oh, wow. Now it's really angry. There's the uh, audio edit button, edit audio button. There's record. Yep, unfortunately, we are just not getting a signal. All we get is that. So can't be because that switch is dirty in there that's actually switching it back and forth, right? I mean, we should be getting a signal at this point. And then we get like a roar of... Uh, audio there sounds like a water fountain so that little sticker that we saw inside may have in fact been a premonition to what we were going to experience with this machine and uh yeah we're hearing that now with the audio playback and i just hit play and not a lot changed so yeah so our ancient egyptian vtr needs a lot of work but it's really interesting and i thought you guys would be interested in seeing it our little video recorder video recorder from sanyo this thing probably weighs 60 pounds somewhere in there and um uh, anyway well guys thank you for joining me for the program today sorry i didn't have any other uh footage to show you here those of you who wanted to see the guys on cam you'll have to go back and search for databits panasonic reel-to-reel -reel video recorder or you can also search for the uh, sony databits reel-to-reel -reel video recorder so thank you for watching guys please subscribe share this video with a friend leave some comments below and we will see you next time when we discover more hidden gems from ancient egypt